Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. And if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. You can also subscribe to my channel, Ms. Hearn Mathematics, for more math videos. In this video, we're going to talk about writing a vector in terms of its magnitude and direction. Up to this point, we've talked about the fact that if we have a position vector, with its initial point at the origin that ends at a pair of coordinates a b then we can write the vector as a i plus b j where i and j are the unit vectors in the horizontal and vertical directions we've also talked about how to find the magnitude of the vector the magnitude or norm of a vector v is going to be the square root of the sum of the coefficients of i and j, a squared plus b squared. This makes sense because what we have here is a right triangle, so the Pythagorean theorem applies. And the norm, or magnitude, is the length of the hypotenuse. What we're going to add to this discussion now is the angle theta that's formed between the vector and the positive side of the x-axis. The components a and b can be expressed in terms of the magnitude of v and the angle theta that v makes with the positive x-axis. The angle theta that v makes with the positive x-axis is called the direction of v. Notice that because the magnitude of v is the hypotenuse, the cosine of theta is going to be the x-coordinate, or the adjacent side, over the hypotenuse. In this case, the x-coordinate is going to be a, and the hypotenuse is the magnitude of v. So if we rearrange this, we get that a is actually always equal to the magnitude of the vector v times the cosine of theta. And similarly, we can see that v is going to be the magnitude of the vector v times the sine of theta. So instead of writing the vector v as a i plus b j, we can write it as the norm or magnitude of v times the cosine of theta i plus the magnitude of v times the sine of theta j. One of the situations where this relationship is useful is when we're given the angle and the magnitude of a vector, but we don't know the coordinates of the terminal point. For example, the jet stream is blowing with a force of 60 pounds in the direction north 45 degrees east. Express its velocity as a vector v in terms of i and j. So what we know about this vector, which has a magnitude of 60, magnitude is often a force, and then we're also given a direction north 45 degrees east, which means that if we look north and then turn our heads to the east by 45 degrees, we're going to see our vector going in that direction. That would mean that theta here that I have marked is going to also be 45 degrees because they have to add up to 90. So we have the angle formed with the positive x-axis and the magnitude of this vector is 60. So we can use v equals the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta i plus the magnitude of v times the sine of theta j. The cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2, and the sine of 45 degrees is also root 2 over 2. So we're going to have v equals 60 times root 2 over 2i plus 60 times root 2 over 2j. Simplifying, 2 goes into 60 30 times. We have 30 root 2i plus 30 root 2j. In other words, the terminal point of this vector v is going to occur at the pair of coordinates 30 root 2, 30 root 2. In the next video, we'll see how we can use this concept to analyze a situation where two forces in two different directions are acting on an object and what the resultant force would be. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. You can also subscribe to my channel, Miss Hearn Mathematics, for more math videos.